What's up guys? Welcome back to another live stream from Scalar Learning covering SAT Khan Academy Math. And sorry, we normally do these on Wednesdays, but we had to push it to Thursday, unfortunately. But thank you guys for being patient. Uh, we got a quick audio check. Today we are covering right triangle word problems, and we're also going to simultaneously live stream this from my Instagram. Whoops. If I can get this set up here. Make sure this is stable. Uh-oh. It was a second ago. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Hope this works. And boom. All right. Without further ado, right triangle problems. As always, I'm doing these problems for the first time, which is part of the fun. Uh, if you like what you see and you are preparing for an upcoming SAT, make sure to subscribe, like the video if you do like it, in fact, and find it helpful. Here we go. So now let's jump into this guy. A contractor must build a wheelchair ramp with the recommended eight degrees of elevation above the ground. So here's our eight degrees. If the elevation from the sidewalk to the bottom of the door is 3.8, how many feet from the wall must the ramp begin? So here's the beginning. It's this calculation that we need to make. What is D feet? So it's looking like this is a trigonometry problem because that's the only information we're given. We're given an angle. We're given one side. So we need to figure out what's the appropriate trigonometric function. Well, we've got an opposite, and we're also trying to find an adjacent side relative to this angle. So that is tangent, right? If we have Sokotoa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if we take tangent, whoops, if we take tangent of 8 degrees and set that equal to opposite, which is 3.8, over adjacent, which is D, we have an equation that we can now solve for D and so, uh, get our answer. So first I'm going to isolate D. I'm going to multiply it over here, get rid of it here. And then I've got D tangent of 8 equals 3.8 and finally let's simplify by dividing both sides by tangent of 8 and we've got our answer 3.8 divided by tangent of 8 this is a calculator problem so let's do 3.8 divided by tangent of 8 and make sure oh and we got to make sure we were in degrees because it's 8 degrees and we get 27 rounded to the nearest tenth, 27.0, right? So that sounds about right. Let's see if that's correct. 0. 0.0. Yes, it's correct. All right, excellent. Let's move on to the next question here. Whoops, how do we go next? Oh, this is the next question. All right, it's very similar. So again, now it's basically the same idea. I don't even have to look, read the questions to be honest. Uh, except for the, this is the only pertinent information I think that we need. So this angle is 0.19 radians. Now it's in radians, so that means our calculator is going to need to be in radians when we do this calculation. So, oops, let's get that right up back. Okay, so now it's the same thing, but what function do we need? Well, we're given adjacent to the angle, and we're trying to find the hypotenuse. So adjacent hypotenuse in Sokotoa, let me leave this up here. For Sokotoa, that tells me we need adjacent hypotenuse right here. So we're talking about cosine. So we can take cosine of theta, which in this case is 0.19, equals adjacent 16 over hypotenuse, which is D. And the same deal, we're going to isolate D. So I'm going to multiply both sides by D. That crosses this out. And then I'm going to say we got D cosine of one point or 0.19 equals 16 and then we want to further isolate D so I'm going to divide both sides by cosine 0.19 cosine of 0.19 and there we go D is isolated and this is our answer now we just plug it into the calculator 16 divided by cosine of 0.19 equals 16.2 Two, nine. So a little longer than that guy. And round to the nearest tenth, that's 16.3. So let's see if that's correct. 16.3. All right, excellent. Next question. The approximate height and base diameter of a conical metal valve plug are shown in the diagram above in centimeters. Okay. What is the distance D, 
this guy, which is, looks like a hypotenuse of some sort of a right triangle. From vertex to the outer, what is the distance d in centimeters from the vertex to the outer edge of the circular base? All right, so we need to find D. We're given this information. We're given this information. This is just a standard right triangle Pythagorean theorem problem where we don't even need to use. We could actually use trigonometry. We can also, I can also see that this is, looks like a equilateral triangle. I think with these markings showing that all these angles are equal, though it doesn't look like that uh, and it doesn't say specifically. So I'm not, I'm going to err on the side of caution and say we don't need that. What I'm going to do instead is use Pythagorean's theorem because we know that, I'm gonna take that triangle and separate it out so you can see what I'm talking about. We know that this side is 3.8. We know that this side is half of 5.8, which is 2.9. We're trying to find this. Well, Pythagorean's theorem says 3.8 squared plus 2.9 squared equals x squared. Let's use our calculator. This is a calculator problem. 3.8, whoops, squared plus 2.9 squared equals x squared. So x squared equals 22.85. And then to find our answer, we need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 22.5, square root of second answer, equals 4.78. So the nearest tenth is 4.8. Let's see if that's correct. All right, next question. We have got this one. On a cloudy night, Madhu, an aviation meteorologist, places a bright light on the ground to shine up at the clouds above, and then he moves to a point exactly 50 feet away from the light. So it goes here, and then goes 50 feet away from the light. He then measures the angle of inclination to the spot of light on the base of the clouds as shown in the figure above. He measures that angle to be 36.5 at the height of four feet above the ground. So this is maybe where his eye level is or something. What is the height of the cloud base above the ground h to the nearest foot? All this means is we're gonna calculate probably this value and then make sure we gotta add four to that. So let's look at this triangle. And again, we're given an angle, we're given a side and we got a missing side we need to calculate. If that's the breakdown, we're usually talking about Sokotoa once again. So let me put this back up here and let me draw this out for you. Soka Toa, and we've got a triangle here and here. We've got 36.5 degrees. We've got 50, and we're trying to find x. But remember, x doesn't factor in this four feet here. So we always got to add in four feet onto x to get our answer. So what function am I going to use? Well, again, I've got opposite and adjacent sides. I need to find the opposite. I know the adjacent, so we need tangent. So tangent of 36.5 equals opposite over adjacent. This is a one step problem. We just multiply both sides by 50. And that's our, that'll give us the, the value of x. So we just gotta add four to that. So 50, make sure to get us back in degrees, 50 times, what is it? Tangent of, whoops. Where's tangent? Tangent of 36.5 equals that. And then we got to add 4, right, to get us that full distance of h. And we're at 40.99 to the nearest foot. That rounds up to 41. You see, it's interesting. All this text is not really that important. As long as you see that you need to solve for h, you can figure out your value just from looking at the graph. So sometimes I feel like if the words confuse you, if the word problem makes it trickier, uh, just look at that diagram and really focus on what you're trying to solve. And usually you can see almost everything, unless there's a variable there that's not defined. Sometimes they'll give you the value in the description, but a lot of times it should all be there. All right, last question. No diagram, so we gotta make one. A tent has forms an equilateral triangular prism. So that's something, equilateral triangles like this. A prism is gonna look like this, okay? With both triangular faces exposed. Each side of the triangular face has a length of 196, okay? Because it's equilateral. And the tent is 250 centimeters long. Boom, 250 across, 250 across. 
what is the height in centimeters of the tent? So what is, if we wanted to make a line go straight up like that. This value is irrelevant. We got a right triangle here because that height goes straight down this perpendicular. So this is my right triangle. So let's break it out like this. Okay. So now we know that the hypotenuse is 196. We know that this little side right here is 98 because it's half of 196. And x is what we're trying to solve for, Pythagorean's theorem. Or we can use special right triangle because this ends up becoming a 30, 60, 90. So it's kind of however you want to do it. It I, I know from a 30, 60, 90, it ends up becoming 98 rad 3 because it's this is double and then this is, to get this side from the small side, we multiply it by rad 3. But if you want to use Pythagorean's theorem, it's 196 squared equals x squared plus 98 squared, right? Subtract 98 squared from both sides. And you get x squared equals whatever this ends up becoming. Um, and then you would have to like take the square root of that and simplify it. It's much easier actually if you recognize this relationship of a 30, 60, 90, because the equilateral triangle is all 60 degrees. It's much easier because if I if I look at the answers, they, they have it in radical form. They didn't round it. So a calculator would make it trickier. So we know that should be the answer. And let's see, that's correct. All right, so that is it for the weekly live stream for SAT Khan Academy Problems. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please click like. And if you want to see more content on the SAT, make sure to click that subscribe button. We got weekly content coming out to prep you for the SAT math. Last but not least, we got new music videos coming out on the regular, so make sure to check those out. We just released a new one on sequences to help you with your SAT prep. Thank you guys so much, and have a great rest of your day.